In 2021, H&M released a machine that could solve fast fashion's biggest problem, aka making way too much damn clothing. The machine is called the Mini Mill, and the idea is simple. You go into the store and instead of throwing your old clothes away, a brand new one is made before your very eyes. Sadly, they have not kept their name for the marketing campaign, but with this announcement, we wondered, what can the Mini Mill really do to change the fashion industry? The Mini Mill is an adorable and impressive little system. It sanitizes your garments, shreds down your t-shirt into fibers, and then with a little bit of new material, makes a fiber web, and then a thread that will be twisted into yarn. The machine then knits you a whole new garment from a pre-programmed model. This feels like honestly the closest that we've come to those cool Star Trek machines that like make you food, but like your t-shirt. When you think that only 1% of clothes globally are being recycled, Mini Mill holds a lot of great promise, and it's already being tested in Stockholm and Hong Kong. Imagine if we could create a fashion industry that doesn't require new materials to be grown and processed. This fantasy of a circular fast fashion industry could mean that we live in a future where we can update our wardrobe guilt-free. Come on, I'm gonna be wearing a different meme t-shirt for every day of the week. Now, I don't want to burst your mental image of paradise, but the Mini Mill is not there to recycle on a large scale, but instead aims to make consumers believe in the idea of textile recycling and encourage them to recycle their old garments. The H&M Foundation said it themselves. The Mini Mill is an attempt to make the whole recycling process transparent and easy to get. But as of today, the Mini Mill has not become Big Mill, and the marketing campaign calling us to join the recycling revolution gets a bit ahead of itself. First, it takes three days to transform one garment through the mill. And right now, we have a whole truckload's worth of clothes being thrown out every second that you watch this video. So at this rate, we would need an army of Mini Mills to even put a dent in the flow of waste that needs to be dealt with, which sounds really cute when you say it like that, but it's just pretty unlikely to happen. Second is it's pretty limited in its ability. Buttons, zippers, and tags need to be removed beforehand, and the machine can't separate between different types of fabric, like cotton and synthetic blends. So that rules out a lot of the garments produced by H&M themselves and the fast fashion industry in general. On the H&M Foundation website, they have this amazing line where they say, here customers can drop by with their grandmother's favorite jumper and turn it into a new updated favorite. I have no idea why I decided to speak that like I was an 80 year old man. Now, I don't know about you, but this sweater is from my father-in-law and was handmade in Canada. This thing was made with high quality materials and was designed to last generations. And I feel like it's just perfect symbolism that the fast fashion monolith wants you to shred up your old heirlooms to make something new and crappy. The third thing is the price. The Mini Mill is not cheap. Its development has cost the H&M Foundation a couple of million dollars and making new garments from scratch is still way cheaper. That's probably why if you go to Stockholm, you'll need to pay $18 to see the reincarnation of your grandmother's jumper, when you could just get a new piece for the same price or less and salvage your relationship with your father-in-law by not shredding his old university sweater. Now at this point, you're starting to get the feeling that perhaps we aren't as excited about the Mini Mill as H&M is. That is because the Mini Mill is actually a very elaborate marketing tool that has been used by different industries in the past with wild success. H&M says on their website, seeing is believing. This holy phrase is in reference to the Mini Mill's ability to transform our no longer wanted clothes before our very eyes. This magic trick does two things. First of all, it shows the recycling process in action. But more importantly, it relieves our consumer guilt for getting rid of the clothes we shouldn't have bought in the first place. Now, if this is starting to sound familiar, it's because this exact same mechanism was used by the plastics industry to convince us that buying single-use plastics was a good thing. 
even though they knew that recycling plastics would never actually work. If you want a great video about this, our friend Rolly Williams from Climate Town has created a full breakdown on this, and the parallels are pretty crazy. What the plastics industry understood was that if the general public was convinced that their consumption habits were okay because of the miracle of recycling, then they would buy way more. And as we see plastic popping up in just about every corner of the earth, I think it's pretty clear that it worked. But the major sticking point in both cases is that recycling, whether it's a shirt or a Mountain Dew bottle, is just not that easy, effective, or affordable. This comes directly from the H&M website. Polycotton blends have proven especially tricky, since the fibers once twisted together are nearly impossible to tease apart. The main reason why you haven't seen more progress on polyester recycling is because virgin polyester is so cheap and it's really, really hard to come up with a competitive alternative. As you may know, the plastics industry has barely managed to recycle less than 9% of the plastics globally. Right now, textiles are at about 1%. The general consensus is that trying to recycle old clothes is a much less effective way to reduce waste and resources than just not producing so much low quality garbage in the first place. But then again, that's sort of H&M's business model. So rather than change the system that they know is flawed, H&M is hoping that their little mini mill project will get people to start believing in the dream of textile recycling and then keep buying more of it. But here at Future Proof, we're not going to end on such a low note. I mean, there's always a silver lining to everything, so let's look at something that we can appreciate here. And in the meantime, if you are liking this video and you enjoy the content that you've seen on this channel so far, consider hitting that subscribe button. We release a new video about different brands and companies that are making a difference in the world or not every week. So maybe we'll see you around. So the main challenge of textile recycling is separating materials, as we learned just a couple minutes ago. But there might be some technology helping us with this too. Bear in mind, all of this is coming from H&M's foundation webpage or whatever, so we have to take this with a grain of salt. The Green Machine is another technology they have helped develop that can separate and recycle polyester and cotton blended clothing using only heat, water, pressure, and a biodegradable chemical all in a closed loop where every input is used again and again. Now this, for context, is really cool. The polyester reportedly doesn't lose any quality and can be reused, while the cotton is transformed into like a cellulose powder. This byproduct is still kind of unknown and we're still seeing if there's any possible uses for it, but one problem that is not yet solved is that polyester, even recycled, still releases microplastics every time that you wash it. Honestly, in our opinion, this is way more promising than the mini mill because it tackles a much larger problem. The fact that so many garments are not yet recyclable in the first place. The H&M Foundation states that this thing could handle about 1.5 tons of textiles a day. Way better than the one t-shirt in three days by the mini mill. No offense, little guy. In 2021, the first large-scale green machine is supposed to start recycling a couple tons of blended textiles per day at the largest textile manufacturer in Indonesia, but we have not really seen any sign of this green machine on the company's website yet, so I wouldn't hold your breath. So this green machine is a welcomed progress, but what I found crazy is that this thing only took $6.8 million and a couple of years to create. I mean, that sounds like a lot of money for you and me, but for H&M, that's not even 0.05 of 2020's revenue. So when we hear... The holy grail is a garment to garment recycling. And that, that's for me where today most of our investment going to. We have to understand that this is the holy grail for H&M's business model. Clothing recycling is great, but if you only need a couple of years and not even 1% of your revenue to support the development of great innovations that could actually make a difference, why didn't you do this before? And what does this innovation create long-term in terms of customer behavior? In general though, I would say that this is a positive step forward. We need to have proper textile recycling innovations to make a sustainable fashion industry, but it has to work in conjunction with a bunch of other stuff. We need to prioritize making and buying high quality products that are going to last more than 25 minutes. If we're still trying to work with a model based on overconsumption, there's just no way that we're ever gonna get through all of the clothes that are already built up in the backlog. 
But in the meantime, please don't let your grandma's jumper be shredded by the mini mill. I'm gonna be wearing this thing as long as I possibly can, and you should always try and buy secondhand if you have the option. If those two aren't available for you, then make sure that you're buying things with natural materials like hemp, tensile wood fibers, and organic cotton. We have a whole video from Patagonia where we talk about how they're changing the industry with this new material. If you're interested in checking that out, you can click that link right there. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next one. And please, if you do one thing from this video, don't buy anything from H&M. They're the worst.